Hi everyone, uh, I'm Fredubati. This is a, a lecture on logistic regression, which is a second part of um, our topic in module three. The first part uh, was linear regression and this deals with logistic regression. So the outline or the agenda for this lecture is, uh, so we're gonna start with some context about why do we need logistic regression, okay? What are the context is application area. And then we actually cover about, you know, what is a logistic regression model, that what is the underpinnings behind the mathematical model and the, the logic behind, uh, you know, you know the, the, the model itself. Then we're going to get into the coefficient of the parameter estimation. Uh, so maximum likelihood is uh, a type of uh, some mechanism by which we estimate the parameters, the similar to what we did uh, for linear regression, which is application of least square. Here we use maximum likelihood estimator. So we will cover about the, the, the maximum likelihood function. Then uh, we're going to talk about the logistic regression extension, again, similar to what we did for linear regression, where you expand uh, uh, linear regression, simple linear regression into multiple linear, logistic linear regression, which uh, deals with multiple predictors. So we have the same thing for logistic regression. So this is an application of logistic regression when you have multiple predictors, more than one. And another extension is when the response has multi-labels or multi-classes. Um, again, similar to what we did uh, in linear regression. There is a, quite a bit of overlap between linear regression and uh, logistic regression. And our, and our final discussion point is generalized linear model. So in fact, simple linear and simple logistic regressions are a special case of general linear model. In, uh, so when you do your modeling in R, the GLM function is what we use for logistic regression. So there is a parameter that determines the, the probability distribution. Uh, that is really what separates the different type of uh, uh, general linear models. So we will, we will discuss about um, that uh, at the last topic of this lecture. So the question is, why do we need logistic regression? Uh, why not uh, linear regression? So uh, the application of linear regression is for dealing with qualitative variables, variables that have discrete outcomes, right? Uh, that are not easily represented by numbers. Uh, linear regression deals with numerical responses, continuous responses. So many real world problems, uh, we, uh, we get qualitative information. Not everything is quantified. So uh, there are so many applications where the dependent variable is non-continuous, taking the specific values, right? Such as uh, whether it's gonna rain tomorrow or not, okay? Uh, it's a dichotomous uh, outcome. So logistic regression can model the directly model the probability of those outcomes. Now, one of the definition of logistic um, um, probability is the values fall between zero and one. It is it's continuous between that values. So when we say uh, binary response, it is zero or one but the actual application is a probability of determining those outcomes. So it falls between zero and one. And it can take any value between uh, zero and one. Now, uh, why can't we apply linear regression for that? Because if the values between zero and one is continuous, you can actually force linear regression to determine that because that is what uh, linear regression does, right? It predicts is or determine uh, the numerical response. But the problem with that is outside of the boundary between the, the zero one, linear regression gives you a value that is not consistent with the definition of probability, okay? Uh, when we discuss about logistic regression model, I'll show you that uh, it's easier to explain in diagram. 
where linear regression gives you a value outside of the zero one range that is not consistent with the uh, use of probability. Okay. Now, so that's one, uh, one problem of applying linear regression for qualitative responses. Another one is when you have multiple responses, the problem is even more pronounced. Okay. Uh, so again, uh, as I indicated earlier, um, so we are discussing about the simple logistic regression where we have a single predictor in a single responses, right? Uh, and that response variable is a binary where we deal with only uh, dichotomous outcome, so you know, one or zero. But logistic regression can be applied or can be extended to be applied for responses with multiple classes. And so applying linear regression for that kind of problem is even more difficult. So the preferred solution is having logistic regression determine the conditional probability. So the conditional probability here is what is the probability of the outcome of the response variable given the predictor, different values of the predictors. And logistic regression is a much preferred solution to answer uh, probabilities. And again, the key being the answer you get, uh, the, the prediction you get from logistic regression is a number, uh, it's a mapping to a probability, but it falls between zero and one, which is one of the requirements, what defines the probability, it falls between zero and one. Uh, probability is not defined outside of, uh, there's no negative probability, or it cannot be more, you know, uh, a it cannot take a value more than one or greater than one, okay? Okay, so let's look at the logistic regression, the models of the mathematical uh, logic. So, so we say the logistic regression models probability of the response, right? Uh, in, the, in the logistic regression, the simple logistic regression case, the response is a binary variable. Right. For instance, the probability of uh, a loan default. Okay. So the equations, the logistic reg uh, regression, logistic regression model, it models the relationship between the probability of the response variable, y in this case, and the predictor. Again, this being a simple uh, logistic regression, it has only one variable, so it's not a vector. This is a, a scalar variable, a singular predictor. And we use a logistic function. So if you remember, there is quite a bit of a similarity. Um, if you remember the equation from linear regression, in fact, you see this exponent to the mathematical constant E, that's what define the linear regression. Uh, for simple linear regression, that is directly determines the value of the expected value of the, the response. But in this case, what we have is a probability of the response y given the predictor different values for the predictor. And it leverages the logistic function. And then uh, the nice thing about the logistic re re uh, function is it resolves one of the problem, the problem that we discussed earlier if we were to apply linear regression for uh, binary responses. And uh, Beyond the fact that it's a continuous value, it just gives us, it nicely maps uh, to the probability value. So similar to what we had, now this, it's most things that we covered, we discussed in linear regression applies here. So if you see it, I don't have the error term defined, uh, which we covered for in linear regression. So the, uh, the parameters in this case, uh, beta naught and beta one, uh, so the beta naught is a bias or intercept. Uh, it, it is what shifts the curve to the left and the, to the right. So at, at this changes, it's an intercept value, which is, um, which determines you know, the shift to the left and it, it moves the curve left and right. The beta one is the slope variable again similar to the uh, uh, application of linear uh, regression so this is the slope that defines how steep the curve would be okay 
So let's see the um, actual curve and compare with linear regression. And this um, highlights the difference between the two and one of the challenges that highlights one of the challenges of using linear regression for qualitative variable. So the blue curve is here is a logistic regression model. Again, it uses a logistic function. It models the probability of the outcome of the binary, the binary variable given different values of the, the predictor x. And then it's defined by this function, right? e to the power of the, the linear you know, function right here, which is what we used in uh, linear regression. In fact, I have the model for linear regression. So if we fit a linear regression, it would be like this, right? And this is defined by this equation right here. This is the linear regression that we studied in the first uh, part of uh, this module. So it's the same as this, except this one is embedded in a logistic function. So the problem, so the logistic function, like I said, resolves or addresses one of the challenges that we have in applying linear regression to this problem. So if we had assumed this orange line, which is a linear uh, regression line, if we had for this problem, so, so assume this is uh, a model to answer a probability of uh, a rain tomorrow, right? So it can only be two, it takes only two values. It's gonna rain or it's not. So zero represents not raining and one represents uh, uh, raining, okay? And the logistic function answers the probability of being zero or one. So if we had, if we had a linear function applied to this problem, so as x values falls uh, below a certain value, the answer that you get from the linear model could go below zero, right? So that is what I said earlier, linear regression could give you values less than zero, which is not defined in probability. There is no negative probability. And the same to the right. So when you have, when you pass a certain value uh, or larger than uh, some value in X in the predictor, and the linear regression will give you a value greater than one, which is also not consistent with uh, the values of probability. However, in logistic regression model, it doesn't matter how large you get, you only get a bit close to one, but never uh, greater than one. And this the same time on the left side, as the X falls below a certain value, the logistic function right here goes, gets very close to zero, but never zero and never greater than zero, right? So it always gives you a value between zero and one, which is uh, consistent with probability. So uh, regardless of the value of X, the logistic function will produce a sensible probability value as X takes a smaller or larger values. So that is one of the reasons why logistic regression makes sense and uh, 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 a preferred solution for determining the probability of a binary outcome. Okay. All right. Uh, so let's look at some transformation of the logistic function. Uh, let me let me go back to that logistic regre regression function that we looked uh, earlier. So this is a logistic function, log lo logistic regression function. Okay. Uh, in models, the conditional probability. Now, if we do some simple algebraic manipulation, you would get this equation. Okay. So this equation, the one you see on the left, the probability of the conditional probability over one minus the conditional probability is odds ratio. Uh, odds ratio is nothing but just, uh, odds ratio of a variable is the probability of that variable over one minus the probability of that same variable. So in this case, it's the conditional, right? The y given x, okay? So, if these values, so it ranges, the uh, odds ratio, it ranges from zero to a positive infinity. So a value of one of the odds ratio means it maps to the probability of less than 0.5. And when the odds ratio is greater than one, uh, the probability is greater than one. Okay, so now 
if we take a natural log of both sides, we apply log to both sides of this equation, we would get this, okay? Uh, this is called log odds. So the log of the odds ratio is called log odds, and it's called also legit, is a legit function, okay? So it's been a very interesting transformation. This gives us, the right-hand side is a linear, uh, uh, legit, the linear regression model that we discussed in linear regression, right? Except that it equates to the expected value of the response variable because the response variable is continuous in linear regression. In this case, it equates to the log of the odds ratio, which is the logit function. Okay, so this is a very interesting manipulation and then it makes it easier to interpret um, uh, logistic regression in the way we interpreted uh, linear model. So uh, it is a linear function, but it's linear function uh, of it, the, the linear function it gives you the log, not the response variable directly. So the logistic regression has a log that is linear in x. It is linear in x the same way that a linear function is linear in x, except that it gives us the expected value of the response variable, okay? So another way of to look at this is you can think this in terms of uh, a linear regression that finds the log odds of the probability, okay? Log odds of the probability. So, uh, so this transformation is, well, I think we discussed this earlier, is one of the issues that exists in feeding a linear model to probabilities. This is a transformation that avoids that problem of giving us a value outside of the zero and, uh, values of probability, okay? But uh, the interpretation is interestingly similar to linear model, right? Except the left side is different. It's a logic function as opposed to the, the response variable itself. So if I increase the predictor, now the log odds change it by by. So if I change x by a unit, unit change causes the log the log odds. The one on the left side changes by beta one. Okay, so that is the interpretation as opposed to a changing to the expected value of the response in the case of linear regression. So that is why logistic regression models. It models, uh, uh, it, 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 so the logistic regression is a linear regression that finds a log out of the probability, okay? Uh, so that's an interesting uh, manipulation and it gives you some way of comparing logistic regression function to a linear function, okay. Okay, now, so we, we have the logistic regression function uh, involving the parameters, the beta naught and the beta one. But the values of the parameters are not known, right? We need to estimate that. So the parameters are estimated from data. So this is, again, similar to linear regression, right? In linear regression, we leverage the data to estimate the parameters, okay? Now, in linear regressions, uh, we use a uh, list to square estimator. We try to minimize the square difference between the actual and the estimated value, and that, so the, the whatever parameter that minimizes the list to square, is uh, the estimated value of the, the parameters, the betas, or the coefficients. Now, you can actually use least square for logistic regression, but it is much better to use maximum likelihood estimator. Uh, it's easier. So the most commonly used general methods used for estimating the parameters in logistic regression is uh, MLE, the maximum likelihood estimator. And it requires that you have to have a probability distribution function for the response. You have to assume a distribution. With, uh, now, in the GLM function that we used in, uh, uh, in uh, R, that is one of the parameters that you provide. You have to define a probability distribution. For binary responses, it is binomial, and I'll explain why. 
and the a likely function is defined, then you need to have a likelihood function, right? That is what you, uh, allows you to estimate the parameter. So a likelihood function is defined to calculate the probability of observing the outcome given the input data. So you have data, you want to get the parameters that to maximize the probability of observing that data because uh, it's just because that the observation is you deducing from the observed data. So you want parameter that maximize what you have observed. Okay. So that's an optimization function, right? When you try to optimize the probability of observing the data, that involves optimization. So the function is optimized to find a set of parameters that results in the largest sum likelihood over the, all the training data, all the training points. That is, so you have to have a likelihood function. And again, we need to maximize the conditional probability. Logistic recreation models a conditional probability. So that means we have to maximize the conditional probability of observing the data given some probability distribution. That probability distribution is binomial for binary responses. Okay? And the probability distribution is a function of the parameters. So here is a likelihood function for a binomial. So the xi, see this is a likelihood function, is it involves a product of all the things in the training points. So you multiply over the entire training points. N is the number of observations you have in the training data. So for each case, you take the probability of the predictor to the response times one minus the probability of the predictor over one, uh, two, one minus y1. So what this means for each training data point, you take the value of the predictor and the observer response for that particular uh, case. Uh, for the outcome one, when y1 is one, it, it, it is represented by p in this equation. And for the cases where the response is zero, the probability is, is one minus p. Okay. Now, in general, when you multiply small numbers, right, uh, in, in the previous formulation here, you will show that we are multiplying a bunch of small numbers. You know, these are probabilities, right? And uh, in general, it's unstable. Uh, it can lead to, you know, numeric underflows, floating point uh, overflow. It's just unstable in general. So. Uh, standard practice is to convert or to transform the multiplication into uh, into summation problem using log probabilities. So this is exactly the same equation that we saw earlier. It's just except that it is converted into sum. Okay, so it involves a log term, and uh, uh, but this equation is mathematically equivalent to the other one. And another thing is, in general, in optimization, it's easier to uh, minimize. So both minimization and maximization type of uh, optimization, but uh, minimization is easier, so we take the negative of this function. Okay, The negative of the log likelihood function is used as a preferred to minimize a function rather than maximize. It's just a convenience, just makes the mathematics simpler to work with. But even with that, there is no closed form. There is, you cannot solve this problem analytically. So what it is done is you have to do numerical analysis. Uh, numerical, you know, numerical analysis is just, it, uh, it's a greedy approach, it's an iterative uh, uh, optimization and method. Now, nobody does this by hand. So in R, when you call a GLM function and pass the parameters, that is what the software does. Uh, the underlying implementation is numerical methods, uh, implementing uh, numerical methods to estimate uh, uh, the values of the parameter that maximize the optimization problem. Okay, but this is the formulation, and this is how we use maximum likelihood estimator by maximizing the probability of observing the data. So the parameter value that leads to that 
are the values, the estimated parameters. So, uh, but like I said, uh, you have to define probability function. So we, to apply or to implement MLE, we need to assume some probability distribution. For binary logistic regression, the most appropriate uh, probability distribution is a binary, uh, pro binomial probability distribution. So if you think about it, it's a, bina uh, by, by it's a, a binary outcome, right? There is a possible values of the response variables are zero or one. So each data point in your training sample are like a Bernoulli trial. So Bernoulli trial is a trial on an exa or an example that has uh, two outcomes, either zero or one. So collectively, if you do multiple Bernoulli trials, that gives you a binomial probability. That's why binomial probability is the most appropriate for binary logistic regression. Uh, so in the function in uh, R uh, for logistic regression, for simple logistic regression, binomial probability distribution is what you would have to provide, okay? So other thing is, I think I've said this so many times that many aspects of logistic regression are similar to uh, linear regression. For instance, uh, I'm not gonna you know, discuss these things in detail here, uh, you can go back and check your linear regression lecture, but it's a standard error that we use to measure the accuracy of uh, the coefficients in linear regression can also be used here. And also you can use these statistics uh, in effect similar to the T statistic that we covered in linear regression. So there are some metrics by which you measure the validity and the performance of logistic regression similar to what uh, we did in linear regression. All right, uh, so let's discuss some extension of logistic regression. Uh, the thing that we have discussed so far, the simple logistic regression where it has one predictor. By the way, uh, I think I consistently using the word predictor, but in linear regression, uh, I probably used uh, independent variables and machine learning folks uh, use the term feature. So they all mean the same thing, okay? so. Uh, one simple extension, maybe uh, it's an overkill, but uh, this is another extension similar to what we did linear regression. Remember, simple linear regression, we were able to extend it for uh, multiple linear regression where you have multiple predictors or multiple independent variables. You can do the same thing for logistic regression. So only difference is you have additional terms, right? So here it is instead of a simple, instead of having a single predictor or a single independent variable, you have K of them here, right? Now the parameters become vectors, it's not a single. Remember we had beta naught plus beta one only term. Now we have beta one up to beta K. So you have parameters for each of the variables or each of the independent variables. That's pretty much it. So the logic stayed the same, the logistic function is similar in form, uh, with uh, uh, the simple logistic regression, okay? And the same for the, the logit function. You take the log of the odds ratio or the logit and it becomes a linear function of the x's. Uh, so the x is a vector here because we have multiple independent variables. So that is one extension of log logistic regression from simple logistic regression to multiple logistic regression but still the response variable is a binary. Now another extension is not only you have, not only you have multiple predictors or multiple independent variables, but also the response variable is no longer a binary variable. It has multi-classes. So instead of let's say uh, loan default or not, you might have low, medium or high or uh, values of a color. So any other uh, outcomes, qualitative outcomes, more than two, okay? So that's another, it's called multinomial logistic regression. It's a very popular, this is probably in the real world, mostly this is what we do. Uh, uh, so how do we do that? Uh, really the extension is not that difficult. So let's assume you have K classes in your response variable. So. 
for each class from 0 to k minus 1, for each class in your variable, you would have a bias term similar to that we have for, for uh, uh, the binary case. And you would have vectors, right? Now, this is vector because the, we are considering multiple predictors or multiple independent variables. If this happens to be uh, a single one, this, this is a scalar, not a vector. But the only difference is each of the classes will have the term. Uh, the bias, you have the set of parameters for each term. That's why you have the C term here represent the class. So each term will have a set of uh, the parameters. So now, if you think about it, really the, the case that we have seen so far, the binary case is a special case of this one. Instead of having multiple ones, uh, you have a single outcome. But here, for each class, you will have uh, this defined, the parameters defined, okay? And again, that's another similar aspect. Well, not with linear regression, but because in the linear regression, the response variable is a number. Uh, so there is no like direct comparison like we did for logistic in multinomial. Okay, so things that we have discussed so far, uh, the cases that uh, the multinomial case or the logistic regression, yeah. they these are special cases of a general linear model. General linear model, very powerful paradigm in which you can pretty much, so as long as you can estimate some probability distribution for the response variable, you can model pretty much anything in the general linear models. Uh, so you will see that in the GLM function, uh, you can define different uh, different probability distribution to uh, model different kind of problems. In fact, the linear regression that we did using least square can be done using maximum likelihood estimator. The only thing you need to do, if you want to do linear regression using GLM, you pass a Gaussian or the normal distribution for the response variable. It's called a link function. That's pretty much what creates a relation between the parameters and the linear predictor, right? Uh, remember the transformation that we, we looked at earlier for the logistic case? For the logistic, as we discussed, the uh, binomial is appropriate probability distribution. So GLM is a very powerful uh, function. It doesn't only uh, model by uh, logistic regression, but you can do other things. Linear, uh, even linear model that we did it you, in the, in R, it is an LM function. The least square estimator is called LM. If you use GLM using maximum likelihood estimator, you have to provide a Gaussian as a uh, distribution function. Uh, there are other types. There are many types of uh, problems that you can solve using GLM. You can change gamma, uh, Poisson for count data. All those uh, can be modeled using GLM. So the logistic regression function that we studied here is a special case of that. Okay. So that is pretty much it. Uh, you know, the rest of the things, obviously we will have to experiment or fit the function uh, in R, okay? Ah, this has some references if you wanna get into the details. Uh, you know, the introduction to statistical learning is a very good uh, reference. And there is even a more a mathematical uh, version of that uh, things elements of statistical learning by the same authors very very good book okay thanks for listening